Hi there folks, welcome back to the SDL2 series. And in this lesson, we're gonna work on getting our projects organized. So let's go ahead and dive in. So what I wanna talk about today is our project structure. So over on the left window, I'm just gonna go ahead and list out some of the contents of a previous lesson that we've completed. And that was we created a textured rectangle class with its interface and implementation. And then we had a main for the main body of code. Now, while this might not seem too significant at this point, we are getting to a stage where it'll make sense to have a little bit of project structure. And this is something I want you to think about as far as how you can organize your projects. And additionally, I do want to build a little shell script so that we can have consistent builds. It's not gonna be fancy. We don't need to use make files or CMake, at least not quite yet in the series. But instead, I want to go ahead and make sure that we can get consistent builds. Don't worry, though, in the future lessons, I'll make sure that I explain the flags and how to compile and build everything just to keep everybody in the loop. So a little bit of inspiration, though, first, before we dive into talking about this project structure here, I want to go ahead and just bring in some other popular projects here. This is the Godot engine, which is a game engine. And what I want to show you is just how they structure their projects. It's OK to take inspiration from some other successful open source projects. And we can see that there are some interesting contents here for how they organize their folders, such as having, say, the core engine, a documents directory, perhaps drivers or other files needed for different operating systems, the different modules, platforms, scenes, test directory, third party, and so on. So this is just one example of a project. But we might also draw some inspiration from other engines or eventually what we're sort of making here is a little gaming or multimedia framework with SDL2. So as our project gets bigger, again, we want to get organized. So a similar project, Ogre3D, which is a 3D rendering engine, has the following documents. You see some overlap here. There's a documents directory, maybe something for the media, samples, tests, maybe external tools, and so on. And one more engine, just to give us another frame of reference, the Horde 3D engine also has a directory for the engine here, a place for the binaries, samples, documentation, some organization of source code, with the libraries. So again, this sort of makes a logical sense of how we want to break down these engines. And also just for a quick, for fun, if you haven't seen these engines here, here's the Gudo engine, Ogre, and Horde 3D. Worth a check out after this video, of course. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at our source code and a project structure. Or at least here's a project structure that I'm gonna to subscribe to just for consistency with other projects that I've seen while working professionally or building my other projects that just sort of works. We're gonna have a documentation directory for any automated documentation that we would eventually want to generate. Even if it's just a simple readme file for now, that's totally fine. We'll have a place to place our assets, whether that's images, sounds, or any other multimedia. A source directory, and typically it is an SRC directory, includes and our libraries, a place where our binaries will always be generated, and any other third party libraries needed. And of course, SDL2 is probably a candidate for a third party library. So this might vary, but this could be things like actual uh, include or include only header files like popular math libraries like GLM or STB image or any of these particular tools would be candidates for here. So code that you haven't written, but might be distributing with your project for some reason. All right. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and set up our project. So I'm just going to do an LS here so you can see the contents or tree, if it's helpful to see that way. Or let me go ahead and just open up this project folder for folks who are a little bit less used to the terminal. So I can go ahead and see what we have here. I'll keep this open while we refactor our structure a little bit. So what we're gonna need is, again, a doc structure. So let's go ahead and create that. And stylistically, I'm gonna make things lowercase just for consistency. Let's go ahead and have an assets directory source include lib bin and third-party libraries. So simple as that. 
Now let's go ahead and move some of the files around. So again, I've got my structure here, but I need to move my source files, that is anything that's a .cpp into the source directory, and anything that's a header file into our boot directory. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna move these files one at a time, and you might prefer to do this in a GUI, that's fine, to the source directory. And let me do .slash source here and move the main file also into the source directory. And let's go ahead and move our header file into the include directory. Now our structure looks something like this. Now, how are we gonna build this? Well, we want our binaries for our programs to actually fall in the bin directory. So what we are gonna have to do is change how we've been compiling things just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the main.cpp, which now lives in source. And again, I've been including how to build our projects at the top of most of our code samples here. Of course, you can check out some previous videos if you want to revisit exactly how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this line here. And instead what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a file at our root directory here, and I'm just gonna call it build.sh. So it's just gonna be a simple shell script that's gonna compile my project in a consistent way. Again, there's tools like make, CMake, uh, for generating different build configurations, or perhaps you've been following along in IDE like Microsoft Visual Studio or Xcode. Those are all great tools, feel free to use them. They achieve the same task of giving you a consistent build. But for now, let's go ahead and just paste in our compile string here. And this will simply execute this command. Now we do want to perhaps modify this slightly here so that we are compiling all of our source files in the source directory. And we are including everything in our include directory, that is all of our header files. So we've had to make a slight modification there. As well as we'll have in our binary directory the actual output for our executable. And this can be a nice thing to do because then you aren't, if you're generating lots of files, for instance, as part of your build, you can have them all in one place. And if you need to remove them, it's easy to just clear everything out from a specific directory. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna leave this as a one-liner here. I'll run the sh command, the build script, and this is just invoking uh, the shell here to run on this command here. And I'll do an ls, or if you prefer a tree, and we'll see we have in our binary directory the program. So let's go ahead and just rerun this. Dot slash bin prog. And you can see this is from our previous video where we had a textured rectangle class. So a little bit of a structure can go a long way when generating some of these projects. Again, it doesn't have to be complicated. We can draw inspiration from other projects that exist. And going forward, as we add more files, this will just help us make sense of our projects as we scale further. That said, in this tutorial series, we're gonna to try to keep things pretty simple and foundational, but I do think it is something worth talking about for structuring your actual projects as it'll help make your learning easier as you proceed. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give this a try. Code's always in the repo right after the video is posted. Give a like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one, and we'll get back to coding.